Morning everybody, how you doing today? In this episode of the show, I wanna to talk to you about the latest blog post from Premier Security Researcher, Troy Hunt. Um, for those of you that don't know Troy, you probably know his work. Um, he is the creator and maintainer of the website Have I Been Pwned, um, which is a credentials aggregator. It's a phenomenal service to the community that Troy runs. Essentially what he does is he collects data breaches, he um, sanitizes them, organizes them, and puts them into uh, this massive database that's accessible um, from his website, haveibeenpwned.com, um, and that allows you to go in and check to see if your credentials have been breached um, as part of various hacks. So the latest post that Troy has up um, is about 773 million users' uh, credentials. Now, um, this is also, or I should say, 773 million user credentials. There is some duplication in that data set. Um, Wired had an article on this. It's popped up on TechMeme. Um, it's gaining a bit of attraction, and Troy's got a phenomenal blog post up about it. Um, I'll link to that in the description below so that you can uh, read about that um, and his details on processing the data set and how he came about it. Um, but the interesting thing here is that this is an aggregate data set, as opposed to um, other data sets in the past where it's like there is breach from company A and here is the resulting data. This is a collection of multiple data breaches over an unknown period of time. Now, some people are like, wow, this is a ton of user credentials. This must have been a massive breach, and that's incorrect. This is a collection, like I said, of other data breaches, um, and it's not uncommon to see these sort of packages of data. Now, the Wired article referred to it as the Voltron of data breaches, where um, separate things combine to build one massive thing. Um, and that's not a bad way to look at it. I would look at it more as a giant fishing net, um, where, uh, you know, and that's apropos, a little foreshadowing. Um, but what happens is uh, in the digital underground, cyber criminals will try to collect as many sets of credentials as possible um, because of the low cost of attack. And that's really what I wanted to talk about today is that um, when I talk to security professionals, when I talk to the average user when I talk to the media about cybersecurity and about security breaches and the economics of cybercrime. One of the absolutely critical points is to understand that it is such a low cost to commit cybercrime, especially once an attack or a scheme has been designed once, to execute it multiple times essentially costs almost nothing additional for the attacker. So the analogy I like to use is let's pretend we're bank robbers because you know that's fun to pretend. Pretend. Remember I said pretend. So pretend we're a bank robber. And if we knock off a bank um, and get away with some cash, um, we're quite proud of ourselves. But if we try to do it again, if we knock off a second bank, the risk is uh, increasing significantly. The reason being is when we hit the first bank, we left evidence. There was uh, witnesses, there is um, video camera evidence, the, the police have investigated it. They've gathered up all of this information about how we conducted this crime. And if we go to commit another crime, the likelihood of us getting caught significantly increases. The effort for us is the same as the first. We need to case the joint again. We need to plan it all out. We need to put a huge amount of effort into this second crime, just as much as effort as into the first crime. However, our risk is increased. So our return is actually disproportionate to the uh, first one, right? So the risk is now higher for the same return or potentially the same return. Cybercrime doesn't work that way at all. If we're now going to commit a cybercrime, we figure out and design an attack or a scheme um, to exfiltrate data. We figure out what we want to do and we point our tools at one target. Well, for us to point our tools at a second target, we're not increasing any risk because of the lack of data sharing, because of the fact that we can hit um, targets in different countries. And um, there's a whole bunch of things that combine together to say that, you know, we're not actually increasing risk by going to the second one. Um, but for us, the effort is actually less because we simply just repoint the tools. We don't need to recase the joint. We don't need to do a lot of the same work. We've done it once and we can take advantage of scale. Now, yes, eventually this will catch up with us as the cybersecurity community and will help build defenses and help people be aware of the crime, but the economics are fundamentally different. And that's why we see breaches um, or data collections from breaches like the one that Troy has uh, put into Have I Been Pwned and sharing with the community now is because I can take that as a cyber criminal, oh, big quotes, I'm not a cyber criminal, obviously, uh, but if I was a cyber criminal, I can take all of those 773 million credentials and put them into my tools to try to use them in breaches in the future because it doesn't cost me anything extra and it could increase my returns. 
that's why we see these sort of data aggregates. Now this one's abnormally large for sure, um, but that's why you'll see this coming together. And it's not the first, it's not the last, um, but I just wanted to share that out with you guys. Um, so uh, as a little closeout for this episode, I wanna give another shout out to Troy. Like the work he's doing with Have I Been Pwned is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Troy is also a well-renowned public speaker. He speaks around the world. Um, he's based in Australia, but he does go uh, through Europe a lot and give a lot of talks there. He's also an active author on Plural Site. So go check out his courses there because I know that helps out Troy or make a direct donation to Have I Been Pwned. Um, the work he's doing truly does lift up the rest of us. Um, his tools in Have I Been Pwned have been integrated into a whole bunch of password managers, um, which is phenomenal, um, which is what you should be using. We've covered that ad nauseum. Um, I'll link to some of the older episodes where we talk about password safety um, down below. But again, huge shout out to Troy. He's doing a phenomenal work. And uh, I, as a security professional, appreciate his work. I think you, whether you know him or not, indirectly appreciate his work, but by all means, please give him a shout out. Um, we need people like him to help us raise the bar. Um, and this latest uh, explanation of this mega breach uh, or this mega data collection um, is uh, just another example of the good work that he's doing. So uh, kudos, Troy. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know. As always, hit me up online at Mark NCA. And uh, those of you in the vlogs in the comments down below. And uh, for podcast listeners and everybody else, uh, as always, by email me at markn.ca. Hope you are set up for a fantastic day, and I'll see you on the next show.